Welcome back everybody. We have now successfully made it to protecting SSH servers with the Duo Network Gateway. So that's what we're going to look at in this video today. We're going to go through the steps that are mentioned within the Duo documentation for the DNG and we're going to show you how you can access your SSH servers that are potentially on premise or multiple locations remotely without the need for a VPN. So as we do, we start with the uh, documentation and for this particular one, the Duo documentation does have a uh, up-to-date video that just basically goes through the uh, set up similar to what we're going to do, but maybe we'll look at it in a little bit more detail uh, today uh, along with the instructions as well So as with all the things we have some prerequisites that we need to make sure are in place before we get started Some of these prerequisites are related to the DNS records for your public DNS in order to reach the SSH servers or group of servers within your environment and then others are around uh, certificates as well so do make sure that you check out the prerequisites pretty straightforward uh, and it goes without saying really that uh, you need to ensure that the DNG has the ability to reach those uh, protected SSH servers in order for this to, to work so we're going to start off now by, uh, we'll start off by running through uh, the steps and we start off with the Duo admin panel where we need to actually add the application um, that we want to protect and in this case it's going to be uh, for SSH Relay. So if we go to our Duo admin panel here and we go down to applications and then what we want to do is we want to protect an application. So what we'll do is we'll select that and then we'll type in SSH and you can see here um, we're going to be using this one here, Dual Network Gateway SSH Relay. So we'll click protect on that and as always we get the um, relevant details that we're going to need in order to put them into the DNG and then you've got the elements around whether you want to use the universal or traditional prompt we'll keep it on universal the newer of the two and then you've got the policy section so as I always say when creating new applications I do recommend you create a, a new policy for each application so I'll just quickly do this now, SSH DNG demo policy we'll call it and we'll just ensure that we have the, the basis down there so we'll just add that there, we could always come back and modify that and play with that uh, later then you've got the global policy and I would always also recommend that you ensure you give this application a relevant name, especially if you are configuring uh, multiple different services under DNG as well. So we'll call this one DND, DNG uh, Demo SSH. Um, and you've got the self-service portal option here, which will allow users to either uh, add or remove their devices or reactivate Duo. We'll just leave that uh, as default turned off for now and the rest of the information we can leave as that as well. So we'll just save that. So that's now created that, that application and what we'll do now is we'll head over to our DNG. So if we quickly look at the instructions now, what we've done is we've essentially covered step one step two and do, 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 what's this one mm. yeah so we, we're essentially just done those first few steps there so now we're going to head over to the as i say the dng where we're actually going to configure the elements under there so if we get to our dng we can see we've got our web application configured that we did in the previous video 
what we're going to do now is we're going to select SSH under applications and then we're going to add an SSH server. So we need to get the integration key, secret key and API hostname from our admin panel first and foremost. So we'll do that. So we'll copy the client ID which goes into the integration key. We'll copy the secret which goes into the secret and then lastly we'll copy the API hostname which goes into there. And you probably just noticed there where we, we've just seen now this additional option come up um, which is the for the option to do the frameless authentication uh, for this application which is a relatively uh, new feature at this time. We'll just leave it as it is for default now and we'll concentrate on the external URL settings. So just as we did with the web application we need to ensure that within our public uh, DNS we have included or created a CNAME DNS record for the external URL. That external URL is going to be used for by us to access the internal SSH server or servers. So you can see here that um, this is saying create a CNAME DNS record for the external URL that you've entered into the field and make the value of the record polled on it, whiskid.co.uk. So essentially we're just going to create a CNAME that's going to uh, have a name but the value of that points to our DNG. So in our case, I've already created a CNAME for this demonstration. So ours is called lab SSH network .uk. And we will also use Let's Encrypt to generate a certificate. Session generation will leave as a default for now and then we get to the internal servers section. So as it says here, multiple SSH servers can be protected be behind one external URL. So multiple SSH servers can be uh, connected when, uh, can be used when using uh, an external URL one. So you don't have to have multiple. Um, and you do that by essentially just specifying whether you're connecting to a subnet, a range, or um, you know particular FQDN. So in our case, we're going to be connecting to one demo uh, machine. So I'll just give it uh, an IP address here, and then that's going to be on port 22 as default. And that's pretty much it in terms of the uh, SSH DNG configurations. There is a few pointers down here um, in terms of you know ACLs, network ACLs, um, the sort of things you can enter into these fields here. Um, so do take a look at that as obviously you may be using more than one um, as well. So I'll just click add SSH server or add SSH relay rather and we can see here that it's failed to obtain a certificate and the reason it's failed is because I have a spelling mistake here so there we go so I need to change this element here so it's not being able to find that so now it should be able to find it so again we'll just ensure that everything is here we need to input the uh, secret again. Okay, and let's just run through that again quickly. Add SSH secret. It's one thing I've noticed when um, I don't know if it's to do with my system or 
general with the DNGs, but one thing I have noticed is that when you do get that issue, whether it's a port issue or whether uh, the DNS entry hasn't been added correctly, um, sometimes when you try to go through the settings again, it doesn't let you um, finish it off, so you do need to maybe start the, the process again. So lab, SSH, network, wizkid, code at UK and I have spelt that correct this time which is good so hopefully we shouldn't get that issue and again I'll just put in my um, one server that we're going to be using for testing and it should work this time there we go so we can see now that the relay has successfully been added so when that's done, you do get a uh, another section here, SSH client configuration section. And it basically tells us that users will need to install the Duo Connect application and add the following to their SSH client configuration to access the server protected by the DNG. And there's more information around that, I believe, within the uh, documentation here. So while we're on the documentation, in fact, We've covered step one, step two, step three, step four, step five, step six, all the way down to, and there's a few examples here of different ones you can, um, different entries you can have under step 10. And we're essentially here uh, where we get to the point of um, getting the output we can see here. So then we need to, in order to kind of finish this off and get this in place so that we can test, and you can see we're literally right at the end now already, so not long at all to, to set up. You basically need to install, as it said, the Duo Connect uh, client. And um, this can be installed on Windows, Mac, uh, and most Linux distributions, it says and uh, there's a user guide if you want to learn more about Duo Connect. Yeah, that's pretty much it. So we have, because we, we are going to simulate testing uh, this access to the SSH server from a remote system, um, I have brought in my other system that is technically connected uh, to a, an external network so that we can actually test this so this system already has the Duo Connect uh, module installed or application installed on this machine. Back to the SSH relay quickly, what we're going to need to do is we're going to need to, um, as it says here, we need to, once we've installed the Duo Connect within our um, SSH client, we need to add uh, one of the, the following. So whether you're using Windows Putty or whether you're using um, a different SSH client we need to add uh, basically create an entry for uh, our external URL so that we can relay that to uh, the, the correct place so I'm gonna copy this across to my other machine all right so I've copied that uh, command now over to my remote system and what we need to do on here is we need to add this now to a uh, to the SSH config before we can actually test. So we'll do that now. So to do that, we need to ensure that we have, I may already have the command here. So on the Mac device that I'm using, our Linux device, we need to edit the SSH config, so we'll do that now and we'll add in this configuration here. Once we've done that, we'll save that and exit. There we go, so that's now uh, being saved and we've we've got that now. I 
and I'll just try to drag this over now because they have been redirected as expected so just give me a second there we go apologies I had too many uh, too many windows open so now let's log into into this with our single sign on Just get that push notification now. I'll we'll prove that. And there you go. We've uh, successfully authenticated. So now we theoretically should be able to return back to our SSH client. And you can see here that it has been successful, but as this is just a, a test, um, this machine uh, has not been able to match any of the um, uh, hasn't been able to negotiate any uh, keys I'll just quickly see if I can add those algorithms to the file and then we can uh, test again There we go, so that's better now. So you can see now it's asking me for the, uh, to, to confirm the fingerprint. And there you go, so I've been able to now access that, uh, that device remotely. So that's um, essentially how we can look at protecting uh, SSH servers remotely without the need for a VPN so um, one extra thing that I just did there was add in the um, uh, the key exchange methods and uh, into the SSH config file so you may need to uh, do that as well in order to connect if you have issues connecting to some of your uh, SSH servers and we go to our dashboard we can see here um, that the access there has been has been granted that's for our uh, DNG demo SSH application our relay that we created we can see the uh, access device that I used We can see that's been granted the time and uh, the um, authentication method that's being used as well so that in a nutshell is simply how we can protect SSH servers with the duo network gateway without a VPN very straightforward and uh, quite cool stuff in our next video we're going to look at the last part and uh, we'll probably look at at a presentation and go through the DNS aspect of the requirements. Um, I've had a few customers that haven't really kind of understood the need for um, the, the DNS elements within the DNG so um, I'll do my best to explain that in the upcoming video where we cover uh, protection of RDP servers.